morning and welcome back to the Museum of Art. We are still closed as of now um, due to COVID-19, but we're happy that you're joining us again for one of these virtual tours or uh, Facebook Live events where we show you a little bit of our permanent collection. I'd like to go outside the regular playbook today and rather than just talk about one artwork in detail, I'd like to share with you some ideas for how you can look at artworks longer and see more. You know, museums can be overwhelming. There's so much to see and always so little time. And there is, I believe, an underlying pressure to see everything in the museum when you go to it. But what would happen if you were to slow down and really take your time with just a few works of art? What if rather than seeing everything in a visit, you decided to only see a few things? The rewards and benefits of slow looking um, are, are well established, and there are numerous benefits. First, it takes off that pressure that you might feel to see everything in one visit. It can also reveal the stunning complexity of a single work of art, or the stunning complexity about the world that you can learn from one work of art. And finally, it can lead to a state of psychological and emotional mindfulness, peacefulness, and well-being. Less truly can be more. Today, we will not take our time the way I'd like you to do. I'd just like to teach you these four strategies for slow looking. So it'll feel rather rushed, but my hope is that when you come to the museum, you'll try to practice any one of those four with any given work of art. The first strategy for slow looking involves looking big, or in other words, to make an open inventory of everything you see in the artwork. Casting a wide net can yield a wide range of observations and discoveries. To practice this first strategy, I'd like to show you this work by Rose Hartwell, a corner shop in a pawn, uh, a corner window in a, in a pawn shop of 1893, where we see various objects for sale in a pawn shop. And again, with this first strategy, I would simply try to look at everything. Really slow down, take your time, and acknowledge everything there is, from various vases and shelves, uh, to the coins, the opera glass, the coral necklace, um, or the various pocket watches that are displayed in this pawn shop. I would also look, of course, at things in the background and notice the buildings, the windows, perhaps even the shadows and the times of day, or the time of day that might be suggested. As you continue to look closely at everything, you might notice the various textures of the materials from metal to polished ceramic, but especially that beautiful iridescent sheen on that shell right there. You might also notice how there's one display case that is turned away from us, increasing a sense of enigma and mystery about what might be found at this a pawn shop. Again, you would want to take about five to ten minutes to really just look at everything and have no limitations set for yourself. The second strategy for close looking is a kind of correction to the first, in that it allows you to narrow your focus. With this strategy, you're organizing your viewing by looking for specific things. These could be uh, the formal elements of art, like color, shape, line, texture, and just deciding to look at those. Or you could decide to look at just hands or just facial expressions. Let's look at a work now by an anonymous artist titled The Landing of the Pilgrims from the mid-19th century and look at just the hands and see what they might tell. I'm going to repeat myself. You would want to take about five to ten minutes to really slow down and see what the hands, for instance, in this artwork might be saying. Here the pilgrims have arrived in the New World at Plymouth Rock, and you can still see their boat in the distance, but 
if you were just to focus on the hands and the narrative they tell or what they might be saying about the various individuals and how they use their hands in this situation. We see that there is variety. We see a man with a sword suggesting hands are used for fighting, for defending. We see a man, of course, in the center raising his hand in a blessing gesture, holding the Bible in the other hand. The idea of hands for blessing, for serving, for preaching the gospel. We see a woman who, historically we know, got very sick on this trip um, and was close to death. You can see this, of course, in her uh, complex, uh, complexion. But I like the hand here, or the, the set of hands that suggest comfort, um, healing perhaps, or using our hands to show affection. And then we see this hand here of this man who just seems to have forgotten his wallet in the old world, but that's up to your interpretation. Another way you could focus on just one thing in this work is perhaps looking at the outfits, just the fashion of the day, um, or even just the shoes, the various types of shoes. So that's a way to narrow your focus. The third strategy for slow looking is changing your perspective. This strategy can reveal large patterns and small details. One way to do this is to look at an artwork from a distance, a distance that is perhaps uncomfortable or unusual at first. For instance, if we were to turn around and look at Edwin Evans' grain fields of 1890, from this distance, we're going to have a very different experience than if we look at it from a regular viewing distance or really up close. From this distance, we might notice the extreme one-point perspective that the artist uses uh, to create this illusion of depth using the haystacks in their diminishing size to also underline this illusion um, of depth. Now let's go closer and look at it from a regular viewing perspective. And as we go closer, of course, you'll start to notice certain things coming into perspective, coming into focus. And from this regular viewing uh, uh, distance, we start to notice, of course, uh, the various details. The woman, perhaps, that you might not have noticed earlier, um, just finishing up the harvesting process here. You might start to notice the trees in the background, the building. But even from this distance, we don't see everything. Why don't we come even closer? And so this is all about changing your viewpoint, your angle, your perspective. Um, it helps to come even closer. You could, for instance, check out uh, or borrow one of these magnifying sheets from the front desk when, you're, when we're open again at the museum, or simply use your smartphone, uh, your camera view, to look through. It acts like a magnifying glass. And you'll notice the various brush strokes, the texture that the artist has applied, especially in the foreground to show us individual bits of straw and hay. Look at the top of this, the apex of this uh, haystack, and how beautifully the uh, midday sun is illuminating um, those haystacks. But also, how the shadows down here fall in this purple mixed with green and all kinds of colors. There's definitely no black in this shadow. And then, of course, we'll notice using the magnify sheet or the smartphone in the distance, the details of the building um, the ladder leading to the attic, but also that this woman doesn't live in isolation. She has neighbors. We see some buildings here in the background. I hope you can see this. I'll just let uh, a videographer go closer with the phone so you can see just the amount of detail in the background. Our fourth and final slow-looking strategy is all about comparing and contrasting works of art. Because noticing similarities and differences can also enrich your viewing experience and add insight to your viewing. I recommend using two adjacent artworks um, and describing them to someone you're with, uh, perhaps in writing if you're by yourself, or simply articulating your thoughts. Why don't we take a look at these two here in conclusion, which on the surface have nothing in common. They're not by the same artist, they're not from the same time period, 
But they do have some things in common, of course. As we compare and contrast, we notice right away that there are um, privileged members of society, two women in this case, um, depicted in a somewhat grand manner style. Here, this woman from 1800 by Gilbert Stewart um, and Johnson the Sergeant, Mrs. Goetz. Um, so we see similarities. We also see differences in age. Um, it outfits clearly the fashion of the day in their activities and how this woman communicates her social standing, not just through her uh, uh, sophisticated pose, um, but and, and her outfit and her wig, but also her activity, that she's writing, that she's educated. In the uh, case of Mrs. Goetz, we see, simply see her in her wonderful outfits, all the various sumptuous outfits, um, but also that bold, engaging gaze that she makes with the viewer, with you, to communicate uh, a certain sense of confidence. Again, I invite you to uh, come to the museum when we're open again, hopefully in the near future, but stay tuned for that, um, and try any of these slow-looking activities for yourself to enrich your experience with visual art here at the Museum of Art. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope to see you soon.